Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Return to Zork. Last time, we'd found the remaining pieces to our flying disc of Frobaz, and had another nightmare featuring Morpheus. So, for now, let's turn the lights back on, and get out of here. So, although we have all the pieces to the flying disc of Frobaz, it's really not much use to us in its current state, just being six broken pieces. So that leaves us with the same question that we faced many times before. What do we do now? Well, there are quite a few screens we became stuck on. The first one was that strange screen next to the Cliffs of Depression. We couldn't make any progress there. Our path was blocked by some kind of invisible wall. Then there was the spider's web in the Forest of the Spirits. We saw a waterfall behind there, something that we're going to need for our invisibility potion, but we don't have any means of dealing with the spider guarding the web. Then there was the Troll Caverns. The problem there was the darkness. If we tried to light a match to see, we wouldn't be able to defend ourselves against the trolls in the cavern. And then there was the lighthouse. We, kn we know we need to make a double rope bridge there, but we can't really secure the rope to the tree or loop it back around to us to secure it to the railing. But that leaves just one other screen that we became stuck on. It's been a while, but the vulture pits. If you'll remember, the last time we were here, we threw some rotting meat and the vultures dove for it, but they got away before we could do anything. If you'll also remember, we threw the fairy dust at Molly a while ago and it knocked her out cold. So if we, uh, say, sprinkle a little on the meat before we throw it, it looks exactly the same. The vultures would never know what hit them. And they're out cold. So, there isn't much in here except some bones and a talon. The legendary return talon. If you'll remember, this was mentioned by both Booze and Rebecca. It comes back to its owner when thrown. Oh, and the music changed. Alright, well, now that we have the Talon, what next? Since it always returns to its owner when thrown, we could tie a rope to it and throw it around the tree at the lighthouse to create a double rope bridge. There's just one problem. I left the rope at the Cliffs of Depression, so let's head over there real quick. Just pick that up, and we'll pay the lighthouse keeper another visit. This vulture's coming in handy, isn't it? So... Again, before we do anything here, I'm going to save. Just in case. You can see that uh, I'm still allowed to attempt to cross a single rope bridge that doesn't exist. That will kill us. But uh, we know what to do here now, so... Let's tie the rope to the rail. And then tie the talon to the rope. And give it a toss. There we go. <laughs> the bow slipped loose. Hitch up your pants and try again. Well, in case it isn't obvious enough, 
the cow hitch was an available knot to us, and uh, we explicitly chose not to use it. Pretty easy puzzle. Just use the correct knot and do it again. That time we got points for it, telling us we did it right. And we can head back to the lighthouse this way if we want to. Hmm. Phoebo's cluster used to be here. Now Canuck started acting very strange after he came in contact with the thing. One night he snuck in here and swapped the cluster for a fake. All right, well, we remember reading about that in the East or West Shanbar times, I don't remember. But uh, ITNL was called to investigate the same company that Canuck works for, so I guess they never did find, uh, find out about Canuck swapping it out. But uh, before we go inside, I think I'm going to take this rope and talon back and then just use our pet vulture to fly across the river now. You remember that cluster? Phoebo's Folly, they used to call it. The one Canuck walked off with. <laughs> that Canuck. <laughs> what a character. You know, it took us nearly a decade to figure out that he was cuckoo. All right, well, there's this shield here. I don't think the Guardian will mind if we take it. Hello. You must have traveled far. Not too many people visit the temple anymore. Not since the reign of darkness began. There is only one magical device left that can shatter the wall of illusion that allows evil to thrive. The device was a disc that was broken and its pieces divided and hidden. All right, well, we know what she's talking about. The flying disc of robots that we're lugging around. Anyway, let's uh, ask her about some of our junk. You have the true sword. Let me bless it. Well, this is a holy woman, and we are at the Temple of Belnair. If you'll remember from the mayor's filing cabinet, the Dwarven Sword, formerly the Elven Sword of Zork, has been blessed by every generation of holy women at the Temple of Belnair. So let's let her bless it. It will serve you faithfully in your fight against evil. Alright, I'm not sure what difference that makes, but... It looks like there are some things in the background we can ask her about. That used to hold a large crystal of aluminite. It was called the Cluster. Canuck used to be mesmerized by it, and when he disappeared, the Cluster lost its brilliance. I believe the Cluster was evil. Since the time of the Cluster and Canuck's disappearance, the world has become increasingly dark. Very few people come here anymore. Ah, uh, Phoebo. He discovered the Illuminate Cluster. The shrine holds pieces of his mining cart and some of his clothes. Alright, well, I think that's all the information we're going to get out of her. So, I'll snap her photo and... Let's get out of here. Now Canuck's been overpowered by the cluster. Now the cluster isn't happy being called the cluster anymore. No, it wants to be called Morpheus. Has delusions of grandeur, wouldn't you say? And Canuck seems to be taking instructions from it. All right, well, that's a big clue. We finally know why Canuck lost his mind and why he seems to have a split personality with Morpheus. And that wasn't there before. If you'll remember, while we were inside, the game said we had been granted a magical favor. This is it. You're kind of clumsy for this kind of work, aren't you? Can't be too choosy these days. Here, you'll need this. 
Wait! Your sword? You must be one of us. Gerald, we've got the bearer of the Dwarven Sword of Zork. Good. We need all the help we can get. How much aluminite do we have left? Right now we have enough. Now let me get this straight. Right now, we've got plenty of aluminite. Yes, sir. It's stockpiled to the left of the armory. Where? Right over there. Where? I don't see it. I forgot my glasses. Keep those lines straight! It's right over there. It's covered. Oh! On the left. The left. Right! Keep those lines straight! All right, well, I think those two were trying to tell us something, maybe. And it looks like they also gave us uh, a miner's helmet. Illuminite attracts evil magic like a magnet. And a minecart. What a coincidence. All right, well, let's uh, take a look at this helmet first. It's a wear-activated miner's aluminite helmet. So before we do anything silly, let's save. And go for a ride. Looks like we could have gone three ways there. Left, right, or straight. But we're right back where we left, right? So... In case it isn't obvious enough, I'm going to put that helmet on real quick, actually. In case it wasn't obvious enough. What we need to do is listen to the shtick between the Dwarven Generals and pick out their directions. Left, right, and straight. And then follow them in order. A wrong turn brings us back here. So, let's get going. How much Illuminite do we have left? Right now, we've got plenty of aluminite. Now, let me get this straight. Right now, we've got plenty of aluminite. It's stockpiled to the left of the armory. Right over there. Keep those lines straight. It's right over there. Oh, to the left. The left. Right. Keep those lines straight. I think we're near something we missed during the Great Diffusion. All right. Well, we've found something, all right. Looks like we've got seven statues and lightning striking the center one. And then this trencher with two buttons, a red one and a green one. We can't really do anything with any of the statues right now. But this seems important. But not much we can do here now. So, let's head back underground. Well, now what? The Dwarven Generals did give us a wear-activated miner's helmet. So, we could use that to uh, see in the Troll Caverns while we have a sword out. Let's head over there. And Oops, other way. There you are! <laughs> My dad, he collects everything he can get his hands on. His room is so packed with useless items, it takes 400 years to sort through it. Sounds like your average adventurer, then. Alright. Well, we don't really have a whole lot we can get out of Rebecca right now. Nothing new to say. Not about any of our new items. So, we're done with her for now. I can sense that your sword is glowing blue. Oh, now? Yeah, now. Well, that's a feature of the 
dwarven or elven sort of zork in every zork game. Although I wonder why it didn't glow blue at the spider. Still, we should, uh, save before we enter a place called the Troll Caverns. And before we enter, that skeleton's note, L-U-D again. Still not quite sure what that means, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Alright, well, a troll guard. Since we have our mining helmet on, we can see him, and we have our sword at hand, so we can defend ourselves. When we use the sword on him, we're given many options. A lot more than usual. We can swing left, swing up, swing right, or swing down. So, uh, let's just pick one. Swing down, why not? Trolls rule. Hmm. Alright. Well, in case it isn't completely obvious, the skeleton's hint, L-U-D, refers to the directions we need to swing. And that's the only time we'll ever be asked which way to swing. So, L, swing left. Alright, what is with that guy's hair? Alright. Well, there's only one guard left. Nice goatee. Oh, and swing down. Yeah, I guess your helmet hair didn't protect you from that. So I wonder what's behind them all. Invader! So, you made it this far. You may have killed my brother trolls, but you won't kill me! It's that guy from the Wonder Years. Alright, well, first thing, let's, uh, save. Alright, well, when we use our sword on him, we're given many options not related to swinging it. We could even talk to him. But let's show him our sword. Wait! Wait! No! No! Spare me! I'll give you this necklace! It has magical powers! MAGICAL POWERS! Just don't hurt me! Alright. Well, I guess we want that necklace. So, uh... Maybe if we give him the sword, he'll let us have it. I'm a troll! A troll! I'm leader of the trolls, and there's no comparison! Woo! Ha ha ha! Okay, maybe we shouldn't be giving up our only means of defense to someone who probably wants us dead. Let's try that again. With more violence. Ah! Ah! Alright, well, that killed him. But, uh, I guess his body disappeared into a puff of purple smoke. And along with him went the necklace. So, yeah. That's not good. We're kind of stuck now. So, let's reload, and try something else. I guess we could try talking to him. But if we ask him about the stuff we're carrying, he doesn't know anything. So, let's just try having a conversation. I don't know what powers you possess! 
But you're no match for me. First you kill my brothers, and now you want to be friends? All right, well, I suppose that's a good point. I don't point. know what powers you possess, but you're no match for me. You are afraid? There's no reason for you to be afraid. No, no, there isn't. But what if we talk to him and don't take a conversational stance? I don't know what powers you possess, but you're no match for me. Oh, perhaps you are already stoned. Let me see. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we die when he touches us. All right. Well, enough horsing around. There was one conversational option we didn't take, but I'm taking his picture first. I don't know what powers you possess, but you're no match for me. You'll never get out of here alive! Wait! Wait! No! No! Spare me! I'll give you this necklace! It has magical powers! MAGICAL POWERS! Just don't hurt me! Alright, and he left us the Necklace of Fear. And I think that's the only time the game calls it that, which is kind of a major hint. When we look at the necklace, it's just called the Necklace from the Troll, and it's pretty scary. And in our inventory, it's simply called Necklace. So, what can we do now that we have this Necklace of Fear? Well, if you'll remember... One of our death messages said that the uh, fangs of death are fearless. And that, of course, was the spider in the forest of the spirits. Let's see if they're uh, fearless in front of the necklace of fear. Since we've been through here before, I, I think I'll just see you guys at the money tree. We need some cash. Alright, well, same as before, we'll just whack it with our sword. But this time, a different-looking coin fell out. Oh, it's that token that Muda gave us. The one that we gave to the, uh, ferryman. So, the money tree will always provide you with another. Not that you should really need it. And some Zorkmids. Four more. So, we're sitting on five Zorkmids. Plenty for now. Let's go to the spider. Okay. Well, we know violence doesn't work against it. So let's see if we can scare it off with the necklace. Wait, we can feed the necklace to the spider? That's just stupid. Let's show it to him. That seemed to scare it away. But we still need to deal with the spider's web. Sounds like a job for our sword. Alright. Looks like that waterfall was Flood Control Dam 3. Which is in surprisingly good shape for a 400 year old dam. Anyway. Looks like the only part of this waterfall we can interact with is the backside of it. If you'll remember, the puzzle told us we need to use water unseen at falls. So I guess that's what this means. And we'll just need to drop one more ingredient in the flask and we should have our potion. Oops. <sighs> there we go. We now have a glowing blue potion. If we take a drink of it, we're suddenly invisible. And we're visible again when we move. So, 
It's good for one move's worth, and we can drink it as many times as we like. But I think we're done here. Let's head back to town. Take a nap. You know, I've lived a long time. And what I learned is you can't get rid of magic. It's like a groove. Show them a little attention, and they're all over you. Oh, back again. You want your same room back? It's still available. Oh, well, same as before. We'll just give her some coins. Your room's right upstairs. You're in room one. And again, same as before, we'll drop our, uh, where'd it go? There it is, Illuminite Rock on the nightstand here. And lights out. Oh, but the helmet is still lighting up the room. Let me take that off. <laughs> My citadel lies behind a wall of illusion. I invite you to be my guest. We can play a battle of life. You know my name. <laughs>